quilt today is actually a repeat of a quilt block I did last year on December 23rd. The Scrappy Log Cabin Block finishes at 10 inches. And I'll show you that video. It's very short. It'll be in, in the next section. And as I go through all of this, but at the bottom I had put instructions to make this 60 by 80 quilt. Six blocks across and eight blocks down. And here are the fabric requirements. And since I promised last year that some of these quilts that I had planned to do, I would show you when they were finished. So that's what we did today. And at the end of this, I want to show you how to use the Sizing a Quilt app. And there are five other apps that I want to go through briefly with you. I think you're going to really like them. They're very much improved. They're easier to use. Most of them, I'm still working on some of the others. And I'll tell you my plans for the future. So let's take a look at how to make this block. And here are the quilt instructions to make this. And then you can check out the quilting apps later in the video. This block is called Scrappy Log Cabin. We're using two inch finished squares for the entire block. And this is a five by five grid. So we have five blocks across and five blocks down. So five times two is 10. That's why we have a 10 inch block. Here are 16 blocks set block to block, and this is the barn raising pattern for log cabin blocks. Any log cabin setting can be used to make the quilt. Here's our patch A, which is a two inch finished square. We cut two and a half inch squares. We'll need 10 assorted of the light fabrics. I'm using low volume prints. You can use the same fabric or you can use whatever you want. We need five patches of the black fabric and then 10 assorted patches of the medium to dark fabrics. And these are the cutting instructions for the individual fabrics. Here's a quilt. This quilt is 60 by 80 inches. There's 48 blocks set six across and eight down. And these tell you how much fabric you need of the light fabrics, the dark fabrics, and the black fabric to make this quilt. Here are my fabrics, my low volume lights, and my medium to dark fabrics, and then my black squares. For this, I'm just going to lay the block out on the proppet board, and then we'll just stitch it together. So we'll start here. And there's our block. We'll sew these patches into a row, and each row we'll sew together. Press your seams and then sew all the rows together, and your block will be finished. Here is the new website. It looks a lot cleaner and it's easier to navigate. You type in, the, the address is thequiltcalculator.com, and this is the home screen. At the list, this list on the very front, are six different applications that I've done and I'm going to go through all of these and a lot of them are a lot easier and they look nicer and it's going to be better than before where they were so let's start with sizing a quilt so that's this one here size a quilt and here's what pops up sizing a quilt and then the, the quilt the quilt calculator.com here you can put your project name so I'm going to put Carol's Folly. That's the name. Here is the block finished size and the width and the length. So we'll put 12 in here just as a test. Now I'm going to scroll down a little bit because I want to show you these results down here. And um, let's see, there they are. So once you put in the block size and this is the block finished size you'll start putting in the blocks across and the blocks down. This is your setting. So let's put uh, three here. And as soon as I put something in this down section, you're going to see the results pop up right down here. You don't have to press a calculate button or anything. So I'm going to type in six here. And here are your results. And so far we have the quilt width and length. So if you put 12 inch blocks, three across and six down, the quilt size will be 36 by 72. The total number of blocks is 18. Here is your binding fabric, so you need 0.42 yards, it's almost half a yard. 
You cut six strips at two and a half inches times the width of fabric. We didn't put anything in for the sashing, the cornerstones, or any of the borders. And then the very last line shows the backing fabric. You need 2.17 yards and you cut one length of 78 inches. Okay, so this isn't the size you want. Let's make it wider. So if we go up here and change this, so it was 36 by 72, put five. So now it's already changed to 60 by 72. And now the total number of blocks is 30. The binding fabric, we still need about the same. And the backing fabric has now gone up to 4.33 yards and we cut two lengths at 78 inches. So what happens if we don't like this quilt size here, let's add some sash. So we'll put, um, let's put two in here. And now you see that the quilt width and length has been updated. Let me scroll this down. Number of blocks is still 30. Here's the binding fabric. So now we're up to over half a yard and we cut nine strips. Here's the sashing fabric. We need 63 inches or 1.75 yards. We cut five strips at 12 and a half inches times the width of fabric and then subcut 71 segments at two and a half inches because we put two inch in here for our sash width. This is the finished width. Here is the cornerstone fabric and cutting instructions. And then we didn't put a border in, so there's no border. And now here our backing fabric is up to five yards. You can do the same thing with the border. If you want to put a border in, let's put a four inch border. So everything is automatically changed as soon as you hit that enter key. Now you have your quilt width and length, your total blocks, binding fabric, sashing and cornerstone fabric. Here is the border if you want to cut crosswise fabric strips or if you want to cut lengthwise fabric strips, that's this, and then the backing fabric. So that is the sizing a quilt. And the only thing you really have to worry about here is if I take this out, the sashing or the border, and I leave these blank, it will just stay the same. It won't do anything. See, all of the same totals are still in there. You must have a number here, either a zero or a, a, a whole number or a fraction. And you see, once I put the zeros in there, the cornerstones and sashing and border all went away. Now, I thought I had it figured out how to print this, but I really didn't. So I'm going to show you a workaround I don't know if it's on all browsers, but I show, I'm showing this up here, the browser. And there's these little three dots. You press on that, and if you go down here to screenshot, you press that, and then you want to capture an area. So I press that, and this, everything kind of grays out, and you have this little plus sign. And now I'm just going to put my cursor around and you can scroll down to get all the bottom. So once you have done all of your calculations, and this is why I put the the project name so you'll know one project from the other, and I think I need to do this again, but it'll have all the information that you just figured out and you're happy with. So let me try this again because I didn't do something. Capture and then go down here and take this. Now it says copy, so I'll copy and then I'll open up a Word file, blank document, and then I'll paste this into the document. And so let's open this up a little bit. And you can see that it pastes it as a, an image file and then you can save this and print it out if you want or just save it as a PDF if you have that capability. But you'll have all this down and you can put this in your project file. And you can do this with all of this, the calculators that I have. When I thought I figured this out, every time I'd print, it would just print blank copies. So that didn't do us any good. Now I'm just going to go through sort of quickly the other ones just to give you a brief idea of what they are. You can either click up here, but they're not all listed up here. I just press the home key and it takes me back. So let's look at squares and rectangles. 
This calculator finds the fabric you need to cut squares or rectangles. So this is just any four-sided figure. And if you're using AccuQuilt, you can just measure your die that you want to cover, like say your half square triangle, just measure that, the length and the width, and put those numbers in here because those are the cut sizes. And we'll go over that a little bit later. So I'm going to put in five here, 5.5 for the lengthwise grain and 5.5 for the crosswise grain because this is a square. And let's say I need 350 squares. So I type the number in and here are our cutting instructions and fabric requirements. The, we cut 50 strips at five and a half inches times the width of fabric, subcut each into seven segments of five and a half inches for a total of 350 pieces. And the fabric needed is 275 inches or 7.64 yards. And that is your calculation for any square or rectangle. And if these are, if you're happy with these numbers, you would go up to the top press the three little dots and you can capture this area and print that as well. So now we'll go up to and click the home again. And the next one are half square triangles. This is a little tutorial showing you how to make half square triangles two at a time or eight at a time because that's what this calculator uses. So this is the half square triangle calculator. Again, you can put your project name this is the number of half square triangle units needed. This is the actual half square triangle units with the two different fabrics. So I'll just put here that we need 24. And the half square triangle finished size would be four inches. And then you select a piecing method. You have four choices here, two at a time with no trimming. This gives you the exact size to cut. And two at a time with trimming, this cuts it a little bit larger. And then the same two choices with eight at a time. So I'm going to press eight at a time with no trim. And here are our results. So fabric one, 10 inches or 0.28 yards. You cut one strip at 9.75 inches times the width of fabric and subcut three squares. You do the same thing with your fabric two. So that's how the half square triangle calculator works. Now let's go up to the top again home screen, and this is the quarter square triangles, the hourglass unit. And here is a little video that shows how to make this hourglass unit. And here is the calculator. Project name, the quarter square triangle finished size again, let's say it's six inches. And the number we need, let's say we need about 60 of these. And then there are our results. If you want to cut the exact size with no trimming, this is what you do. Or if you want to cut larger and trim later, this is what you do. So that is the hourglass or the quarter square triangle calculator. Then the next one is flying geese. This is one I need to update, but this tells you how to make flying geese four at a time. Here is the calculator. Project name, now you choose a finished size. And there's, I don't know, six or eight, eight or 10, however many sizes. Let's choose three inch by six inch finished. And the number we need, let's say we need 16. And this one you have to press the calculate. I haven't updated it yet. And then here is the fabric and cutting for the sky fabric and the fabric and cutting for the geese fabric. So that is the flying geese four at a time. And then finally the last one so far is the side and corner setting triangles. This is when you set a block on point. So project name again, you'll enter a block finished size between four and 18. So I'm going to use eight inch blocks finished and the number of side triangles needed. You'll just have to look at your design and see, count how many side triangles you need. So let's say we need 24. And here is the, are the results for the side triangle fabric. It gives you the inches and yards and the cutting instructions. And so these side triangles, you cut each of the squares in half twice diagonally to get your side triangles. 
the corner triangle fabric is here and you'll cut squares and you'll cut two squares and cut each square in half once diagonally for four triangles. If you ever have to, if you ever put something wrong in there or you just can't get it to work or something happened, just refresh your screen and you should be fine. So now we'll go up to home again and this is the last one so far. I'm going to have some for AccuQuilt. Those are coming down pretty soon and a lot different calculators and some reference material too. And this is something else I've started now, the quilt patterns with calculators. So here is the first one and that's the one you see today. And if we click on this, this is the Scrappy Log Cabin Tutorial and Calculator. So it gives you the tutorial from uh, making the block and you can download the instructions from that video. Then this just tells you a little bit about the block and here are some AccuQuilt dies that are used for this block. And on this one I have included rotary cutting and AccuQuilt dies. There are two dies here that will get these two inch finished squares. So all of that will be shown in the results. Now for this one all you need is the project name and the number of blocks because everything else is already included in there. So you would go to the Sizing a Quilt app first, find out how many blocks you want, because these are 10 inch blocks, so you'll put 10 inch in the block size. Let's say we want 20 blocks. We press the 20 and then here's all of our results for the rotary cutting, assorted lights, assorted medium and darks, and then the dark accent fabric. And I have the same thing going on with these two different AccuQuilt dies. This die cuts four squares at a time, but if you put six layers, you'll have 24 squares at once. And this die will cut nine at a time. And if you put six, nine times six is what, 54? You'd have 54 squares at once. So that's what I'm planning on doing in the future. Let's go back up to the home screen. Um, the website may look a little bit different because I think I'm going to move it yet again, but it will have the same uh, address. You just put in thequiltcalculator.com. I will plan to do more of these, and I plan to do more just regular units, and then add more AccuQuilt dies in the mix too. So just stay tuned, and here's if you want to contact me, you can do that here. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for using the calculators. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos.